Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Let's continue the sci-fi visual effects series that we're working on here, and let's just jump right into the next thing in line, which I think will be of interest to many of you. This is working on light swords. I have to be tactful about how I say this, uh, but let's get into it. All right, so light swords, lightsabers. Um, <laughs> Really the way this starts and the way that you can do this in Caden Live is you have to start with a source image. Now, the way that I created this is I went into Krita, but you could really do this in just about any image editor that supports uh, pings, PNGs, but Krita is the one that I have that works the most uh, friendly to that cause. So I started out designing like this where I had trying to use the full length of the width of the screen. When I say screen, we're working on HD dimension that's 1920 by 1080, okay, pixels. Um, so working within an image that size, because it has to translate to what I'm working with, it has to match that scale. Um, I tried to use more of the width, however, that proved problematic because as I tried to use that, controlling the manipulation once I got into Kaden Live was really difficult, um, and I'll explain why, but Let's just actually go to more of the solution here in that what you actually have to do is you have to design really flat. <laughs> it's going to change and I'll show you how to make it move the way you want, but you have to make a source image that is actually more, more flat, either all the way up or all the way across. I chose all the way across because I get more uh, length that way, um, but use the full width of the space. Uh, that gets important because you have to control by points um, once you bring it in. So let's actually just jump into Kaden Live now and I can show you how this all makes sense. So I started working on how to map this out and really you can get this all done using the corners effect. Um, in the past, I tried out an approach where I used the combination of corners and I used one of the motion effects, but that actually I found wasn't necessary because you can still move uh, the object without having to do a transform or without having to do a zoom uh, position. So let's look at, you can see how there are a whole boatload of keyframes here. There's work involved anytime you're gonna do sophisticated uh, work like this. There's really no shortcutting how this is gonna go. There are some pretty clever tools out there that will do some of the motion tracking, but even they require a lot of tuning and training to get it right. I did a work in about a 30 second clip here and it took me about an hour to do what I'm about to show you. So patience, persistence, and you can get there, but understand that there's gonna be work. There's no two click process to this. All right, so once you have the image that you want, the source color, and a little bit of glow that you want, those are all things that you can do very easily in your editor of choice. You can bring it in as a layer into Kaden Live. Now I'll, I'll start this off kind of from the beginning as I usually do, and I'll just show you here on the right, really the only things that are going on here are the corners, and I did a rotoscoping using it as a mask just because at one point I, I ran it behind my head and I'll show you, and I had to map, mask out my face and parts of my upper torso. Um, so I'm gonna take that off for a second, just so we don't get that in the way. And then I'm gonna take also off the rotoscoping effect. And you can see this is where we start. It is just a plain thing that is there. With the corners, what's happening here, I'm gonna park this back on, is that frame by frame, we are actually drawing out the perspective with the four corners. When you start it, it gives you the four points of the screen, which is why I said make it the full length, because then you get to scale that in. And also it's useful because, I'm just gonna roll in here, you actually get a much clearer representation how to control the object. If it's something that's contained within the full screen, it, 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 you're guessing a lot. Uh, when you're trying to move the point and guess where the the image within that space is going to be so making it the full reach of the object gives you a good advantage in that i know that the tip of it is going to be the edge of the screen so to speak and that way i can move the points a lot more accurately so really this is just a process a very patient process of as i move i am remapping it and what i did here to get here by the way is if you hold the control key and use the mouse roller, 
that will get you in closer. You can use the also the scrollers to get into a certain part. I recommend that because you can see very clearly where you're trying to work. And if you want to be accurate, very accurate about the motion, that's important to do. Frame by frame, map it out. What can be also really useful there is there's a transparency effect. I'm going to flip that on. Um, really all that does, you don't use that in the final mix. What you do is you dial down one keyframe on the overall transparency. That, as you can see here on the screen, helped me to see, well, where's my thing? That way, again, you're not so much guessing. You can kind of work and, and line it up accurately every frame that you go to, to track and keep it consistent with what you're doing. Again, sometimes you're gonna be doing some guesstimation even as it is because the perspective, depending on the, uh, the pan tilt and all those things in 3D space, you have to make some allowances. But it's a way to get it done. Now I'm using the arrow keys left and right, which is really super useful because you need to compare sometimes the motion back and forth. So I'd recommend using that transparency effect uh, to kind of see where you are. And then when you're done, just disable it and it won't be in your final mix, but it's super helpful so you can track along the way. Um, there is a motion tracking effect in Caden Live. I've done a video on that. However, I don't believe that's gonna work here just because of the geometry translation that's coming over into this object. So then for the last part here, I'm gonna put my rotoscoping back on, but I'll show you first why I did that because right there, that's actually behind my head. But for sake of the, uh, the way we're doing this, uh, the image, the overlay doesn't understand that it's supposed to be behind me. So rotoscoping, I did uh, just a quick mask. Uh, and this is a little bit off just because of my zoom there that I did. So zooming in and out will fix that. But I had to do that and use the beziers a little bit to kind of match some of the more interesting details of my face uh, and work my way through that depending on what it passed over and around. And that was just a simple solution to get it through those couple of frames. There is a cool thing with this rotoscoping thing, by the way, um, you will have to invert uh, because you're using it to opposite. And also anytime you do an effect with transparency, this is also true of corners. So I'll point this out here. The alpha operation for both the corners effect and for rotoscoping, you have to change those, the alpha operation to minimum. It starts you on right on clear. The minute you start adjusting it, it kind of messes up the transparency layer, but minimum will restore that so that you don't have like this black uh, surrounding of what you're working on. That will make it transparent again. So set those to minimum in both cases. Also, you can play with the feathering width a little bit, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. Little bit. Um, what this will do is that as the cutout is performed, it makes it less stark, less pointed. Um, there's a little bit of blend that happens. That's what the feathering width will do. So I just dialed that up a couple of pixels and that really got rid of that stark cut. Um, so it was a little, it was more believable as you saw it uh, because there's naturally a little bit of blur that the eye will, will receive as things are moving rapidly uh, versus the hard cut. So the simulated uh, blurring works very well. Coming up on Black Friday, there's an amazing deal if you're a content creator or just interested in content creation, the business of it, the voice aspect of it, how to get into it and deal with brand deals and sponsorships. You don't wanna miss this deal on infostacks.io. Please follow the link in the description where you can get a package at a huge discount, including my eBooks about how to get into content creation, work on it alongside the other hustles of life and approach it strategically. So go check that out. Go pick yourself up a nice package for Black Friday and score a big deal and learn how to navigate content creation expertly, hearing it from the experts. That is using light swords and that's how you can track and really the, the technique is still called rotoscoping even, even though I use this as a mask because you're frame by frame doing it. That's really what the overall technique is called is rotoscoping. So I hope that was helpful. Please give me a like, subscribe if you haven't done that already and leave a comment, ask a question, let me know what you'd like to explore in this sci-fi visual effects series and we'll get to it. Uh, thank you so much for spending your time with me and I will see you at the next video. Take care. Thank you.